Welcome, it's our penultimate panel of Paris Fashion Week and it's a very sad day because it's Marc Jacobs' last show at Louis Vuitton. Um, there's not really much to say other than that, I'm just going to try not to cry on this panel because I think it's going to be a really, really sad show. But luckily I have a cheery, wonderful panel with me who can perk me up, but I'll let you guys introduce yourselves, starting with you, Rebecca. Um, I'm Rebecca Gonzalez, and I'm Assistant Fashion Editor of The Independent. I'm Aurel Cullen and I'm Fashion Curator at the Victorian Albert Museum. Uh, I'm Marta van der Horst and I'm a designer. So I want to kind of go straight to the show because obviously the show is going to do all the talking today but before we do I just want to ask a little bit about Mark Jacobs and why you think he's been such a wonderful designer at Vuitton and what and what he's brought to that house. Are you a fan of his work Rebecca? Oh definitely. Um, I think actually one thing that's really interesting is obviously Vuitton is one of the most successful brands and Mark does an amazing job but it's so successful accessories wise and it kind of gives him that commercial back backing to be so free creatively mm. and there's such a there's such a strong balance between um, you know dis young designers finding that right balance and he has it he's just got this backing so it's just whatever he fancies and he's obviously got such an amazing imagination. Mm, mm. Would you agree with that or what's so special about what he's done at the house? I mean the interesting thing is I think he came in you know he's the first designer clothing mm. designer exactly. there so yeah. it was a blank page mm. and at the time he was an interesting choice because yeah. you know he was known for that downtown New York cool and Louis Vuitton very much a an established Parisian brand so not automatically you know what you would expect mm. um, and I think that the sort of marriage of the two has been incredibly interesting and mm. as you say you know he, he had the freedom to do what he wanted with it um, mm. you know and it's worked so well I think um, also you know his own work his collaborations he's really pushed it out mm -hmm. and you know kept it so relevant mm. um, so it's yeah it's been a fantastic 16 years mm. <laughs> it's a really sad day more yeah. than you a fan of what he does is someone he's someone you looked up to yeah absolutely mm. uh, i do find the collections for louis vuitton difficult because it, i don't find them always that memorable mm. i find them very difficult to like remember my favorite louis vuitton collections but it's just like it's making so much money and at the same time he's so incredibly creative so i think that's always definitely inspiring but um I'm also excited about the future, to mm. be honest. Got an optimist with us, which is good. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> nice. um, before we see the show, I just want to share the show notes with you guys. So he said, this collection is dedicated to the women who inspire me and to the showgirl in every one of them. And then he's listed a load of women, which includes you know, Jane Birkin, Anna Wintour, Sophia Coppola, Katie Grand, obviously Judy Garland, Kate Moss. There's a whole list, uh, Vivian Westwood, Dana Breland. And then he said, whether extrovert or esoteric, these figures are these, fig these are the figures that keep visual language vital. Their style, imagination, creativity, talent, vision, and voice have changed our landscape. When I look around Paris, it isn't the depth of the city that takes my breath away. It's the decoration and the applied ornament that dazzles. It's not about thinking, it is about feeling. There may be no deeper sensation than this when it hits. While designing this collection, the same instinct gathered momentum. I take pleasure from things that, uh, for exactly what they are, reveling in the pure adornment of beauty for beauty's sake. Connecting with something on a superficial level is as honest as connecting with it on an intellectual level to the showgirl in all of us, Mark. Which is sad and quite telling. Shall we see the show? I'm really going to have to try not to cry because it's the saddest <laughs> show ever. And it's so early that I feel like my emotions are just going to overcome <laughs> me. I'm quite unstable at this time of the morning. God, that seems quite ominous. I know, really ominous. Is it a soundtrack? Yeah, it's it it a, yeah, a ticking it's a clock. Or is, it a, or is it a bomb? Yeah. <laughs> it's all <awkward. laughs> Also, when the guests were arriving, as we saw from some of the pictures, the outside of the Louvre was painted pink and there were sort of French maids cleaning out, so sort of spring cleaning the house, which again, obviously, leads to this idea of a rebirth, a change in the house. I like what he said about beauty for the sake of, for beauty's mm. sake. Mm. Uh, I do think it's his fashion for the mm. fashion mm. sake yeah. as well. But I like the pride in that superficiality, you know, connecting with something on a superficial level is as honest as connecting with it on an intellectual level. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And certainly for a, you know, a label that's built or a house that's built on a label, I think that's, mm. you know, it's a key thing.
So obviously the set, it's a mishmash of key sets he's done over his time there. So you can see the fountain, the, the carousel. Fantastic. Sort of Theda Barra figure coming through. It's mm. really Stephen Sprice graffiti. Mm. Is this already bringing back memories for all of you of favourite shows? <laughs> Are we surprised that Vito allowed him to do this? Because there's a certain irreverence to it. I think when it all comes together, I mean, it, it depends also, doesn't it, on what level, how much people are involved and what mm. the brief mm. is. Um, I think it's just when you actually see it all together, it becomes very clear, but... I mm. think it's interesting to see that Art Nouveau, the peacock motif in the ironwork on the lifts and the mm. wallpapers and of course in these yeah. mm. amazing headdresses which are sort of peacocks sp sprayed back. I still have no, no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it really shows his creative, you know, we, we all talked about that amazing creativity and you and it takes you back through the shows and you think there's the hotel, there's the fountain, there's the mm. carousel, there's the elevator and it does, it's almost throwing that creative might in your face whereas yeah. I feel like usually the Vuitton shows it's about the commercial might, you know, six million pounds on a train mm. but this seems to be about creative might which I think is... Yeah. What do you think of the headpieces, Ariel? You kind of mentioned them before. Yeah, I think, they're, I think they're fantastic. I mean, I love that idea where, you know, he's making that point about to the showgirl in all of us, mm. um, you know, and they are just, it's this very strange juxtaposition of these, you know, you think of these big feather headdresses, you think of a sort of bright lights cabaret, but actually he's done it in quite a dark way, yeah. and this is a memoriam, mm. you know, for his time. He's decided to, to take that approach, so I think it works very well. Mm. Um, this looks a lot like his main line this season. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it always harks back to it. It's there always, is always yeah, a, that a key connection, mm. isn't there? These chains are interesting. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that look. What's your take on that, Rebecca? <sighs> Sorry, that's a hard <laughs> one for the <laughs> It's hard. Um, I don't know because it's really hard to read because you don't know on what terms he's leaving. Mm. We all know that the contract was up for negotiation, it's not a sudden departure from the house. Um, but yeah, I mean, is he saying he's, that you know, that the name was, was chains on his career or was, is he, I don't know, it's yeah, hard to judge. Yeah, you can read it, yeah, you can read it you can however read it, you yeah. want. But I think this is very respectful of what they've allowed him to do. The carpet, is it like the Damia check? Check, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's interesting that you say it, because I guess this could be read as extremely irre irreverent, or it could be read as in incredibly respectful, and yeah. a celebration of the creative freedom he was given. I think he is obviously going to be, you know, in mourning for what he's created there. Um, I do think it's quite respectful. I think it's a celebration, but in a very sad way, a wistful way. Well, because it's almost like the showgirl is dying. It's like the funeral of the showgirl. It's really sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this sort of shuttered fairground in a way. Yeah. Sort of dark. Yeah. What do we think of the pieces we're seeing? Because we've talked quite a lot about the set. Because this also feels a little bit like a pastiche of stuff that we've seen him do over. 
I think this is quite beautiful. I mean, it is coming across quite with its own identity mm. quite strongly because a yeah. lot of people said, "Is he going to do a greatest hit?" Yeah, yeah. And then very cleverly, he's you know he's used the sets to do to remind mm. people of the greatest hits. But this is it's quite I think it's quite a beautiful mm. yeah. collection from what we've seen so far with that sort of beading and. and I think the thing is, it's going to sell regardless. It's his last collection. Yeah. It's going to be a collector's items, um, but you know, it's it's very beautiful. That sheer layered tunic over the jeans. Yeah, it feels incredibly relevant, doesn't it, with all that mm. denim? It's almost yeah. And I love the the check on the jeans. Yeah, yeah it feels it's very him. That real opulence mm. and extravagance, but mixed with something that's very goes back. You know, he's known that grunge collection. Yeah, yeah. He's known for being very yeah. What's your take on it, Martin? Oh, I love it. I think the clothes look really, really great. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, you can tell that he, he made them so much money. Mm. You know, <laughs> they're very happy. Yeah. yeah. I'm not happy, I'm sad. <laughs> this is so sad. But isn't it exciting as well to not yet. <laughs> no, really? No, I am excited, but I think there's something... I know what you mean. I feel like, let this stand for itself. Yeah. Let's yeah. not look straight away yeah. to who's going to be filling those shoes. This is sort of a moment Yeah, I think that's why I'm on. glad he's done this, because you know, yeah. it's so true, like, fashion moves so quickly, it's like one person's in, the next person's mm. out, who's going to be next? Yeah. Yeah. As soon as people are appointed, we're like, what are they going to be doing? And for this, he's almost like, you know, mourn me, mm. which I quite like. I like the... And I think this will be a show that people will always refer to as in, you know, oh yes, I saw that, I was yeah. there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is because it's so beautiful. I think. Mm. And I mean, this has been the talk of Paris for the last few days, mm. what's going to happen, that endless speculation. And he's had to deal with that for quite a long time, actually. Mm. There's something quite inclusive about it, I think, the way he's inviting everyone to kind of share in the memories. The fact he's done that from, he's not done it with the clothes in this kind of hinted way, you know, mm. remember all my great creations. It's very obvious, yeah. you know, the character, it's like, it's I quite like that there's something inclusive, like remember all my great moments we shared together yeah. with the yeah. audience, which I think is quite nice, rather mm. than the great things I created. Mm. Yeah. It's always very entertaining, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And it's like he's celebrating that rather than his own talent, to celebrate your tenure through the set rather than through what you've made. Yeah. Mm. I think there's something quite... Yeah, because it's all the team as well. It's all of the creative team yeah. that you're yeah. acknowledging. Too. It's almost celebrating the vision rather than the design. Yeah. Mm. I love this little sort of American football thing. Yeah. Mm. Kind of thing. It's kind of... Cause that sort of sense of Parisian Belle Epoque is still there in the jet beading, mm -hmm. but this kind of, you know, the American show, the football, the shoulder pads, yeah. and the kind of the little trousers. The but that America Paris thing, that's obviously so innate, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this has to be the best collection he's done for a while now. Yeah, it's yeah. It does feel like he's sort of poured his heart and soul into it, doesn't he? Yeah. And I really can't wait to see celebrities shot with those giant headpieces on the cover of magazines. That's going to make mm, for endless yeah. laughs, which is <laughs> Amazing. There's Stephen Jones. That's the first bag I noticed, actually. There have been a fair there've few, There have been a few, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, because then they've kind of been dripping and they look, mm. they're mourning in a sense, they're not. Well, we were just saying earlier how they have a new director of accessories. Yeah, that's exciting. It would be interesting to see um, yeah. mm. uh, how it all works in a new setup. What do you think Mark Jacobs' legacy on design will will be obviously he's still going to be working at his own brand but people often talk that he's kind of the historian of the fashion world kind of plowing through different decades how would you guys sort of sum up his aesthetic and his vision well he's he's incredibly eclectic I don't and I don't think it's just the history of fashion you know because as he says himself he's incredibly inspired by his contemporaries as mm. well you know he'll reference people like Ray Calcubo and mm. you know so I think there is that lovely, there's a great element of surprise, real fashion in a way with Marc Jacobs because you never know what you're going to get next mm. in a way. You know, he can go from a sort of 60s minimalist aesthetic to, you know, Edwardiana mm. and into collections. So, yeah, I think there is just a vibrancy, mm. you know, in, in his work. How does he manage to do that so effectively while keeping a very sort of precise vision because I think you can look at a Marc Jacobs collection and know it's Marc Jacobs despite, despite as you say it going from one thing to the other. I think there's certain elements of his cut that you can often see and you know things that have been you know remember in in the sort of early 2000s the oversized buttons you know yeah. which became mm. such a, a talent thing and sometimes his cuffs and but I think also this the sort of the way he sort of styles the pieces together there, there is that specific aesthetic mm. that comes through regardless of you know his reference mm. and there's a certain play on femininity which is very you know he, I don't know it's almost quirky mm. Mm. which is yeah. a, such an awful word but I think exactly. he basically invented that mm. yeah Actually, that's interesting yeah kind of a reverent mm. kind of way mm. of putting and although they're always really slick productions, they don't the clothes don't come across as slick in that way. Yeah. There's still yeah. a lot of emotion Very behind easy them. For some yeah. Reason. And there's a it's humor strange. to it. It feels light hearted in a sense, which is mm. incredibly difficult when this is such an austere kind of yeah. mm, opulent. I mean it's amazing to show a black collection in a black room yeah. on a black <laughs> yeah. carpet. It's and it still looks so beautiful. So. Are we moved by this? Yeah, I, I think it's really mm. sort of fitting. It's a moment to reflect, as you were saying, in fashion, you don't really ever mm. get yeah. that. So. And also, I think because he did set up Ready to Wear for the label, it's always been him. And you kind of take that for granted. I think, yeah, that's such a good point. And it, it will be strange next season, someone else in charge. Mm. Hopefully it'll be the right fit. There's always, a, I mean, there's so much at the moment of people, you know, LVMH and caring in some sort of like contest to see who can buy the most and who can get the young designers and let's hope it works out well. Mm. Yeah, it's true. What does it mean for the identity of the house? Mm. Because it's so bound up with Mark Jacobs. Yeah. Yeah, so even though it's not his name, it's mm. who you automatically think mm. of. And then also will it start another round of, you know, musical chairs in mm. different houses? Yeah, what's it going to spark? I think yeah. that's a really good point. I think that's why I'm so glad he's done this, because it demands attention. Mm. And as much as I'm going to ask as soon as this is finished, you know, what's going to happen next? It does kind of prevent... Yeah. Music is really beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Really, it's sort of very fitting. What do we think of his comment about being connecting with something on a superficial level as is honest with connecting it with it on an intellectual level? You mentioned that's 
a very sort of apt comment given that it's such a big label which is about people you know just falling in love with luxury mm. do we think that's a valid comment to make i think so i think you know he's a huge fan of mutual prada and he makes no no tr try to try and hide that but i think everyone tries to intellectualize mutual's work mm. um and he's saying you know you can do that but sometimes beauty is just there to be beautiful um, and I think the Louis Vuitton women, as much as people might like to over-intellectualise it, it's not necessarily someone who thinks about, you know, the idea behind the placement of a print or embroidery. It's someone who can afford that luxury. Mm. Well, in a way, yeah, it's a tribute also to the customer in mm. a sense, yeah. you know, which, yeah. you know, and in a, in a way he's sort of thanking everyone with this show and, mm. and, and uh, in a certain sense that thanks the people who buy the bags yeah. and the, you know, yeah. throng and queue outside the Champs-Elysees store. And, it's legitimising that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's no bad thing. Yeah. yeah. It's just making it inclusive in a way. It's very exclusive, but still. Mm. You can't see it that well from the stream, but he is getting a standing ovation as well. Yeah. Which I, I can mm. imagine if you were there, it would be incredibly You'd be moving. there in standing in tears. <laughs> I interviewed Tim Blanks recently and he said he'd never cried at a fashion show and I want to know if this has tipped him over mm. the edge. <laughs> I'm sure. And it's nice that he referenced the Stephen Sprouse because yeah. you know, that was the first, was the first artistic first. collaboration yeah. that they mm. did and I think Louis Vuitton moving forward that's very much mm. their, their mark now, that collaboration yeah. with artists. Yeah. With artists it's such um, a part of their DNA now. Yeah. That tale is quite interesting. Yeah. It's like a funeral horses, you know. Yeah. yeah, the plumes, yeah. I think that's what's nice about this collection. Oh, oh. Should we give him a clap? Yeah. <laughs> So great. That's such a different exit to what he usually does. Mm. You know, usually there's such yeah. a, a comedy. Yeah. So let's talk. We we discussed it a little bit as we were watching. But what will his legacy for this house be? You know, we mentioned he's the first designer to come there to do ready to wear. You just made that great point, Ariel, about you know those artistic collaborations that he's done. What what mark will he leave on the house? A huge one, obviously. But well, it, I think. So it's interesting about his tenure, and I think sort of looking forward, you know, he was there for 16 years. It's a long time, mm -hmm. um, and it will be interesting to see. You know, there's a lot of designers who are sort of recently in big positions in Paris, and you hope that they'll have a long tenure like this. Mm -hmm. um, but you might sort of worry with, with things whether there'll be a change. You know, the pace will quicken, and mm -hmm. and whether mm -hmm. you know people will be in place, almost like a sort of football manager mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. style of thing. But you know, it's it's fantastic testimony to his success. That's you know, sixteen mm -hmm. years is a mm -hmm. very long time in, mm -hmm. in fashion. It's a really long time, and it's you know, he's he's grown into it as well. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I don't think designers will necessarily get the chance to. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Alex Wang at Balenciaga, it's dividing the critics. But is he going to get a chance to, you know, find his feet and mm. build on what he's doing? Mm. Or is he just going to get pushed out and then someone else someone put else in the place? Do you agree with that, Marta? Do you think that's something we're seeing far too much of people kind of being slotted in, not really given a full time to find their feet or even... Yeah, but that's always been like that. Mm. I mean, the number of designers that's been for instance, at Chloe, it was just like, you know, in, out, in, out. Yeah. And it's really horrible. I think mm. it's really horrible. But it's all about money, you know. Mm. So you can't really change that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's not something I get frustrated about anymore because it's just like, it's one of those things that you have to accept. I think with Mark, it's so great because he's not just a designer, he has so much more. And I think he completely, he, was, he must have been one of the first that basically you know, set that out for future designers. That it's not just about designing clothes; it's about bringing the right people in, mm. really focusing on, you know, what the image is of the brand. Because mm. he made Louis Vuitton what it is. Mm. Um, yeah, I but don't know. I th I think that's incredibly interesting. I think he completely changed the profession of uh, fashion designer. Yeah, that's incredibly know. interesting. Do you guys agree with that? Do you think that he did? 
make it more about having a vision than mm. just about designing clothes. Yeah. yeah. Has anyone else sort of done that in the? In the I always go to you or just like our oh, history correspondent. <laughs> Has anyone else ever done that? <laughs> <laughs> but is that do you think that was a very new a new thing? Um, I think I think people in the past have certainly done it, have built up these, you know, huge houses, but mm. it's always been in their name. Yeah. Mm. I think what's interesting about exactly. Mark Jacobs is he's come into a, a very old established company mm. as a you know, an employee in mm. a sense, and, and managed to make something legitimate. Mm. Because at the time people were sort of saying, Oh, it's a handbag company, it's mm. doing I think now we'd never question that. Yeah. But yeah, it, it definitely sort of changed things at yeah. the time mm -hmm. because he came in and made this world of Louis Vuitton and made everybody sit up from the start and think, mm. wow, mm. you know, it was relevant um, mm. from the get go, I think. Yeah. So that's, yeah, he has, he was really key in doing that and mm. sort of 21st century fashion in a way, you know, yeah. sort of laying the, the ground rules mm. for that. Um. I think Phoebe did it at Celine as well. Yeah. I, I mean, Celine was not very well regarded until she came in and she's made it something that people look to every season mm. and people are trying to emulate and I think also Carl did it with Chanel mm. and he's you know he is synonymous with that label so that will be an interesting one when it comes to an end. God, I don't want to see his final show. That will tip me over the edge. Yeah, won't it? I don't yeah. think he'll ever will. <laughs> yeah, no, he'll keep going longer than I'm here. Um, one thing I do want to pick up on, I think Martin, you made a really great point about the people he's brought in, the team, and that kind of collaborative spirit that he's brought. And obviously, he's mentioned some of the amazing women that have inspired him. But I'd like to talk a little bit, particularly about Casey Grant, because obviously she's had such a huge influence on his time there, styling his shows and. Mm. And yeah, let's talk a little bit about that kind of super stylist because people talk about that like it's a very new thing, that stylist having such an important role in, in the show. What do you guys think about their relationship and about that styling explosion that we've seen with these focus on these incredibly talented, incredibly um, famous stylists? I think that these people have always been there. It's just that now fashion is so much more democratic. The fact that we're watching a live stream as well, it's, you know, everyone around the world can watch it. It's on Instagram, back, you see backstage. I think the whole process of fashion is much more open. Um, you know, before the shows were just for people in the industry and no one else had access or necessarily mm. cared. Um, so that's why I think the, the super style, that's the rise of the super stylist rather than necessarily um, the job having changed. Yeah, um, but they've, you know, they've had a great relationship for a really long time. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Katie now, um, if she stays or if someone, I doubt, you know, it's unlikely that she will. Mm. What makes her so brilliant? I think the people, when, when she works with people she has an affinity with. Um, and also she's cool, she's young, she knows what she's doing. She has, you know, these gangs of girls that she has kind of buoying things up. Um, but she has, you know, the knowledge to underpin that excitement. Mm. It's not just, oh, let's get some, you know, big names in. Mm. She has the balls to do yeah. it as well. Yeah, she's, she's very, very strong. From the start, it was just about the guts as well. Yeah. Mm. I think mm. that was, and I think that's also obviously what, something that you recognize in Mark Jacobs as well. And, you know, and there's also, like, as a designer, it's great to always have, like, it's not just a muse, but it's also just a woman. I know it sounds very simple, but it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's such an interesting relationship. Mm. I mean, it was the same with Nicola at, at Casquier, at uh, Balenciaga, you know, that they, there's always a right-hand woman mm. in the background, whether it's a stylist or um, a, a, and Tammy a designer, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Mm. Such a fascinating thing that we never really know anything about because it all happens. Um, mm. But I do think it's very interesting to now mention styling because I think we're entering an, a new phase where it's less about styling. I feel like these collections have been very design-led almost. Mm. That's interesting actually because we've kind of disagreed with that on previous panels, only in Paris where we looked at, um, we was, it was especially when we were looking at Saint Laurent and we talked about how actually the kind of, the visual impact of that collection and the kind of Often people's issue with the collection does come purely from the styling, which obviously is done by Eddie as well. Mm. So it's which ties into the design, but the pieces themselves, it's not really the design that's the issue. It is how the, that looks put together. So it's interesting to see how that goes forward with styling. Yeah, because I think that's what, why Saint Laurent feels outdated. Mm. Well, for me personally, yeah. 
And that's why I think Celine feels incredibly modern because she's actually proposing proportions, mm -hmm. which is super interesting. Mm. And I, I don't know, also the collections that I've seen so far, they just feel much more design-led yeah. instead mm. of... Uh, I call it stylist led. I don't know if yeah. that's a thing. But <laughs> no, I think that's a really good point. Do you, do you agree with that? Have you guys noticed that a bit? Because we've talked a lot about the rise of the separate, you know, people, yeah, this idea of things being proportion led and design led. Mm. Do you think that's, mm -hmm. do you think that, does that come from a recession? People dip in and out of pieces a bit more, they're not as interested in changing their look each season. I don't know where that comes from. That stunned everyone into silence. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's also a, a weird season of embellishment mm. and pleating. Mm. You know, it always means that the designer has more power. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, it sounds very simple, I think. But I don't know, it's my own theory, I guess. But it's like, you can tell that the designer has more power this season, mm. which has been different. Mm. Mm. And I think what's super interesting is that uh, a designer like Phoebe Philo, who's a woman, has such it's so incredibly adventurous yeah. because it must be it must be quite difficult if if you're a woman to be that adventurous about mm. the styling about the colors about uh, shapes mm. i think rodarty is a really good example of that when yeah, they can true. do that mm -hmm. but um so do you th are you saying you think that's easier for a male designer because it's so much about fantasy and it's so it's so much easier to sort of it's my own theory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe I'm just still a bit no, drunk. No, I think that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's super adventure. I think it's super exciting. I think mm. Celine, for me personally, was really exciting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And also because it wasn't. I mean, it was about styling, but at the same time, it completely wasn't because the pieces were so well designed and and well considered, mm -hmm. never overworked. I don't know. I thought it was great. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, Louis Vuitton was great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit. I do want to let this collection sort of steal the show of this panel as it rightly should, but I do want to talk a little bit about about what's going to happen with the house moving forward because obviously there's been lots of rumours that it's going to be Nicolas Gasquier taking mm. over. What do you guys think about about that? Would we like to see him at Vuitton? Rebecca, what do you think? <laughs> um, I don't know. Obviously what he did at Balenciaga was so amazing, but I think, didn't he kind of rally against the commercial side, the accessories, mm. and that's what Louis Vuitton is? I think he said that he wasn't supported, I think. You know, that interview mm. that he gave when he left, it was very much about how he, there was no real leadership and yeah. direction, so that could be quite interesting. That could see. be. I mean, if he's given the same treatment as Mark seems to have, um, and just that freedom, then that would be amazing. Mm. To see, yeah, to see that scale and... I think it's just such big shoes to fill. It's a lot of pressure. Mm. But yeah, it would be. Who else though? I guess that's the thing. What's your take on it? Well, I was just interesting when you were talking about him at um, Balenciaga, you know, it was a, sort of, a, I would say, a, on a smaller scale, but Nicola Guestier and Balenciaga were so closely allied, mm. a bit like mm. Marc Jacobs and yeah. Louis Vuitton. You didn't think mm. of one without the other. Mm. And when he left Balenciaga, everybody said, "How? who could fill those shoes? And mm. I think, um, Alex Wang has, you know, already, you know, we're sort of going along with that. I mean, mm. I know, um, so not everybody's opinion is divided, but I think he's done quite a good job stepping into such, you know, big shoes there. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, who, who knows? Uh, it would be a completely different Louis Vuitton, but if, if he was there, but it could but be. I think that's what it needs to be, yeah. right? It needs yeah. to kind yeah. of needs to say, that was that, which was amazing, but this is where we're but going now. Do you want now. it to become like the next Dior, where it's like, oh, let's put that as a decade and we'll do something different. Is that good for a big house, or do we want a bit of continuation? Because obviously, as you say, Mark's the only one that, that's done ready to wear. Mm. So it's almost, you know, people often talk about the, the codes of Chanel as a house and the codes of Dior, and what they mean is the codes of Coco Chanel and the codes of Christian Dior. But for mm. this, Vuitton is Marc Jacobs, so you, you almost don't want to see that swept under the carpet because he is such an important designer. But at, I guess the, at the same time, it's leather goods. Yeah. Mm. And I think if, if I want to see anyone making luxury clothes, it's Nicola Gasquier. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. And also, especially when I look at Italy and, and you, you, know, you see all the amazing clothes that they produce and you know, Valentino, when it's, mm. it's so beautifully made and I just can't wait to see Nicola Casquier, Louis Vuitton, actually, you know, mm. working with the 
kind of material as well. Mm. Yeah. And I feel like Balenciaga was too much a lab- laboratory of ideas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think with Louis Vuitton it's much more interesting because you get to put it in the context. The problem is that he never designed a good bag in his life. <laughs> but now we have the uh, Provenza designer there, who's going to obviously do mm-hmm. an incredible yeah. bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I've, I'm not worried about it at all. I'm sure mm. it's going to be incredible. You're excited? Yeah, super mm. excited. Optimistic. And maybe the close of this house will be the sort of legacy of the artistic collaboration. Yeah. You yeah. know, we're visiting the sort of Stephen Sprouse and the Murakami, and mm. you know, that's so tangible. I'm so glad that Stephen Sprouse isn't there. I know you said that, it, it, I don't know, that gave me an optimism for that, that exciting sort of future of the house that can be carried forward by a different designer because obviously as you said that's such an intrinsic mm-hmm. part of the mm. house but are we sad to see Marc Jacobs go what's our what's our takeaway from his time there any favorite collections I know that's a kind of simplistic question to ask but did that bring back favorite moments looking at the elevators mm. looking at the lifts like even that's the little great. doorman it reminded me of the the guys on the trains you know and they yeah and his I you know his Richard Prince collection in 2008 mm. it's quite funny with the nurses and just you know, the way he brought his irreverence to yeah. the, the house, I think, was, was great. Was I think he's a great storyteller. And Louis Vuitton is about a narrative, definitely. Mm. I mean, even with their advertising campaigns, it's always about telling a story. Do you think, are we seeing the end of that, the, de- the narrative designer? Because that's one thing that I, I think is so interesting, that the set forms such a huge part of the visual impact of this collection, because I wonder if it he's almost kind of mourning that because we don't see that in the same way you know very few houses have that huge like chanel obviously you still have that mm. incredible opulence but we're not seeing that in the same way you know runways are so pared back now yeah and that kind of narrative storyteller design and people often say it kind of fell out of favor with galliano but it feels like that's something that mark jacobs kept alive and i do wonder if that would be something that nicola gosquia would would do and i wonder if this is also in part sort of mourning that i don't know do you think it's falling from favor or that kind of the story I think it certainly designer. is less popular. Mm. I mean, if you look ten years ago, everybody had a story and a big set and a big theme. Yeah, mm. you know now it's very much about these clean presentations. Um, although interesting, there was a lot of dance this season, mm. which was another. And you know, I was thinking of that and the drums at Kenzo with the water and mm. you know these kind of slightly abstract performative mm. things. But mm. it's not a creating a world and bringing you into it. Um, no. But I think, you know, everything is cyclical in a way. So, we, yeah, perhaps we are at the end of this phase. Mm. Um, not to say it won't come around again, mm. you know, but I think that was a sort of fitting tribute to it. I think there's that question of scale and um, when you do a show that's, you know, all bells and whistles and it kind of just detracts from the clothes and a lot of the time it seems like that's on purpose. Um, and it's a performance rather than you know uh, showing an amazing collection but with Mark they were both always of such a high standard that it was an immersive experience rather than a distraction Mm. Um, and they always felt very symbiotic it was never oh this is one you know this is the stage we're doing but Mm. these are the clothes that don't really but we just wanted to do this Mm -hmm. we had the money so we thought oh let's do this um, mm. And I think, you know, Prada does amazing things set wise. Mm. Um, the season with the huge, huge yeah. screens yeah. Um, and using different artists. So I think there is definitely going to continue that. But I think it's good that it's only done for the right reasons mm. rather than, you know, to make it a spectacle. But then, do you think Louis Vuitton always did it with the right reasons? And not just for a spectacle? I mean, part part and part, but it always felt very... I don't know, I mean, a lot of it is their financial might, definitely. Yeah, I thought that train, for instance, mm. Mm. it's a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, a little bit much. A little yeah. bit much for a live yeah, stream. I guess it goes back yeah. to what you said about, you know, he changed what a designer was. It became about this kind of vision. And I guess I, I do agree with you. It never, it always felt like, yeah, he might have spent six million pounds on it because he could. Mm. But it wasn't, he hadn't tagged it on. It was, no. he hadn't tagged it on. It was all part of his vision. Yeah. And yeah, it might have been much more expensive because he had the funds to do it. But mm. there would have been a train, regardless of whether he could have... Yeah, paper mache it himself. You know, you felt like it was which would have been funny. Yeah, yeah, which would have been very interesting. So, what's his legacy going to be on 
on fashion, not just on, on Louis Vuitton. Well, he's going to still do his own label. Mm. I know. I'm I mean, he's, not, like doing he's, not, not, he's yeah. not doing mark by mark, which is interesting. Yeah. So, mm. you know, it will be strange not having that. I mean, everyone looks at him in New York and then everyone looks at exactly. him at the end of Paris. So it will be strange, that relationship not not having being there. Yeah. Season, yeah. Um, but, you know, he's not retiring completely as far as we know. Um, so his, his legacy at Louis Vuitton is just of sheer fantasy, I think. And I think that's what, you know, that level of luxury fashion should be. Mm. I think that's a perfect note <laughs> to come up on. We can all go away and fantasise now. I'm going to go watch this again and oh. weep into my keyboard. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much, guys. I'm sorry for getting you up so early, but I think it was, it was worth the early start. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.